Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. We are live on Facebook. And welcome for those of you joining us in Zoom, but also are joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, I'm Clementine Bordeaux with Racing Magpie, and I just want to welcome everyone to this evening's Winter Camp. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Racing Magpie or our winter camps, Racing Magpie is a Lakota-centric arts and cultural organization here in Rapid City, South Dakota. And as part of being a good relative, we imagined this programming to think through and um, celebrate the Lakota winter camp model of problem solving and community building in today's world by examining deeper cultural roots about the how and the way Lakota and Ochechi Shakoi people interact with the world around us. And so we have different types of presentations and workshops. And today we are joined with Dr. Tasha Hoff, who will be uh, leading us in a Ochechi Shakoi verb workshop, which I'm very excited about. So um, throughout the workshop, if you have any questions and you're here with us on on the Zoom platform or you're watching live from Facebook, please just drop your questions or comments in the chat and I will relay those um, to our pre presenter. So I will turn it over to you, Tasha. Um, Wana North Carolina ekta watik ash um ia woslaha ekta woashi echamo online usually um uh winter camp el owapa micho cha uh racing magpie um wopila e wichawakie um so um my name is Tasha uh I'm um Oglala and uh, Minikaju Lakota. I'm enrolled in Shine River. I work a lot with folks up in Standing Rock. Um, so a lot of the language that I know comes from my relatives up there. Um, so I speak sometimes a few different words from um, our, our, you know, the, the Southern relatives that I have um, in Lakota. Um, I've been teaching for a while in Lakota, but I'm also learning and I've been learning a lot and um, learned some tips and tricks to like, um, I don't know, speed speed up my learning. Um, I learned a lot about learning and that's kind of what I focus on, but I also um, am a linguist and I get really nerdy about language. So I just wanted to share some of that with folks. Um, people come to Lakota language learning and their journeys in different ways. Um, some of us uh, more and more today are um, having the ability to be surrounded by it a lot. Um, up at Standing Rock where I work, um, you know, th that's growing, but, it, but it's still small. Um, so we have to figure out some other ways to get the language. A lot of that's through writing. We've been writing Lakota, our people have been writing Lakota and Dakota and Nakota for a really long time. Um, so we'll we'll touch on some of that today, um, but um, my hope is to help um, everyone kind of get a new appreciation for the Lakota language, or um, maybe just a new angle to think about it. Um, and if you haven't started learning Dakota or Lakota, maybe this will help you um, get excited about it because there's some stuff that I'm really excited about. Um, so I will share my screen. Fun with verbs, Lakota style. You all can see it. Watch that. Uh huh. Um, so yeah, we're just going to talk about verbs for a while, which is fun. Um, I'm really nerdy, so I like to do that. Um, obviously, verbs exist with other words in the language, um, they're part of a whole you know, context, uh, uh, an operating system. But what I really love about Lakota verbs and what I'll share with you is that the verbs are kind of where a lot of the magic happens in our sentences. Um, and you can actually have a sentence that's just a verb, um, which you can't really have in English. Sometimes you can. Um, so 
let me go here. Okay, so um, there are three takeaways that I'd like us to focus on today, and that is that we are all very awesome. We are all rad, um, and I'll explain exactly what I mean, but you guys are here, and you're, you know, participating in community, and we're talking about Lakota, like, we're just awesome. Um, and Lakota verbs are also awesome, um, and I think that we can use some of the stuff that we know to help us um, use Lakota verbs um, in a way that maybe we don't consciously think about. Um, some of us do. If you're a linguist, you definitely do it. But if you're not a linguist, you may not think about it so much. So I would like to start with this statement that you are a metalinguist. So if you're watching this, you know some stuff about language. And a linguist is someone who studies language and who knows some stuff about language. And you also know some stuff about language. So I want to, I don't know if it's empower or just engage you all to think about yourselves as someone who knows some stuff about language. And that, I mean, you don't need to know anything about language to learn language. That happens a lot. But like we all know about language so we can like access stuff in English, stuff in Lakota, stuff in other languages. And um, I think in our communities, we've kind of like thought that only linguists could do certain things, um, but that's not true. If you know about language and are applying that knowledge about language, then you are a metalinguist. So meta just means about language. So you know some stuff about language. I'll prove it to you. And maybe um, those of you who are in the Zoom, you can um, give me hand signals or you can turn your mics on and participate in this, but Bob walks, do we know who is doing the action? Yeah, yes. Bob, right? Um, he walks, he we know, some of us, if we paid attention in school, know that he is a pronoun. Even though we don't know the terms for these things, doesn't mean that we don't know what it means. So he is a sub for Bob, right? So who's doing the walking and he walks? Bob. Bob, right. I walk. Who's doing walking? Me. Me, uh, yeah. We know you walk and we know we walk. But notice how these last three, I walk, you walk, and we walk, don't have the S on the end. We normally don't say I walks, right? Uh, we say he walks, we say she walks. Uh, you don't say you walks. Right, that just doesn't go very well. Um, there are some linguistic rules for that. You don't have to know the rules for that. You just don't have to know, but you know that that's the rule. And that's what I'm saying is that we know some stuff about English that is linguistic-y, even though we can't name it, even though we're not like studying it, right? So that's what we can embrace when we learn um, Lakota or try to expand what we know in Lakota. Let's go on to the next category. Um, Bob sees the boy. Whose eyeballs are being engaged right now? Bob. Bob, yeah. So the boy, maybe the boy has his hoodie pulled down. He's not seeing anything, right? Um, but who is receiving Bob's gaze? The boy. The boy, right? So we know who's doing the action based on, can anybody describe how we know who's doing the action versus who's receiving the action in English here? The? Yeah, so what if we switched it and we said, the boy sees Bob? Who would be doing in the boy sees Bob? Whose eyeballs would be engaged? That boy. The boy, so implicitly, we know that the position of the noun makes a difference in the sentence in English, right? So if it was the boy sees Bob, the boy coming before the verb, then that's going to be the actor. That's going to be the person who is, you know, gazing, doing the seeing, right? Um, these are things that we implicitly know. Sometimes if you had like a really good engaging grammar teacher in school, you might explicitly know them, but we have this implicit knowledge like built into how we learn Lakota and or how we learn English and it's going to help us when we try to learn Lakota. Um, this is called metalinguistic knowledge and we all have it. 
Um, and there's linguistic terms for all of this stuff that we're going through. I might drop in a few of them, a few grammar terms, but really knowing the grammar terminology is not the point. It's like the conceptual um, ideas that are happening in the sentence that are the important thing. Okay, so now we get to talk about fry bread. Bob ate his own fry bread. Who's happy? Bob. Bob, exactly. right? He's full. He's content. Maybe he wants more. I don't know. But think about this sentence, and we'll think about it in the negative way. Bob ate Sam's fry bread. Who's happy? Bob. Bob. Who's sad? Sam. Sam. Right? We know because of the position of the thing. And we also have this apostrophe S situation happening in English, right? That shows possession or how the fry bread is related to the two characters in the sentence. In this case, the fry bread is connected to Sam, but Bob's eaten it through the verb, right? Um, Bob ate my fry bread. I'm sad. Bob ate your fry bread. You're sad. Um, we're all gonna go and eat Bob's fry bread. Don't worry, we'll get to that. But again, we know how these things are related to each other by these little clues in the sentence. And even though we're not like learning the, you know, the proper linguistic or grammar terms, we know that the fry bread is connected to Sam because of that apostrophe S. Yes. And we know that Bob is the one doing the eating because Bob comes before the verb ate. So let's harness that and know that we are rad. We're all awesome. Ata Nikili or Ata Nikilipi. There's many of us, many of you. Um, and we can kind of harness this implicit knowledge that we have, this metalinguistic knowledge that we have about Lakota to kind of speed up our Lakota language learning. Now, if we only focus on this metalinguistic knowledge that we have about language in English, we're not going to get the whole picture in Lakota. There's other stuff that we got to bring into the thing. I say that grammar is part of a complete and balanced learning plan, um, right? So we got to supplement it with, um, you know, engagement with um, <clears throat> like natural speech from fluent speaking elders, or we have to bring in, you know, texts. If we don't have elders around us, we have to do some drills. We have to do some, there's this thing called comprehensible input. That's really important. Explicit grammar is not gonna bring you the whole way but you can harness it and kind of help you catapult um further i think it's also important to kind of think about um the different ways that our people are learning lakota especially today because we have young folks who are in immersion schools who are able to learn it in a completely different way that i am learning um and we have still quite a number of you know elders or people who were able to hear it, um, you know, as their first language um, before they learned English and they learned it from their surrounding areas. Um, we have people who were able to learn it after they learned English, but same way, like being um, able to um, uh, be surrounded by it. But, you know, as we talk about a lot, um, unfortunately, being able to be surrounded by the language is pretty hard right now, um, unless you're using it with written text, which we have a ton of, and I'll talk more of. Um, but hopefully we'll get to the point where people don't have to rely on that so much, and we can just be surrounded by it and learn it as our first language. But there's a lot of generations that are in that in-between phase where we really have to harness what we know about language through our experience learning English to kind of like create that atmosphere where we can learn Lakota. So it's different. What we're going through is different and and it's a lot of it's a lot of folks that are there, but um, there are people who are getting better and better at Ocheti Shekawe language every day. So um, that's kind of my spiel. Like it's gonna be grammar heavy today and know that I'm not like a grammar is the only way to learn Lakota. Um, it's one way to help you in sort of like a Zoom situation like this. It's like kind of the best thing to do because it's really hard to create, you know, you know, drills and 
comprehensible input and stuff, especially when I don't, I don't know everybody in the class and things like that. So also I'm a nerd about verbs. So this is my chance to talk about verbs. So that's where we're going to go. They are magic. They're so magical. Okay. So verbs, among other things, look what the verbs not only tells us who is doing the verb, we don't need pronouns because the verb is going to tell us who is doing the verb, who's receiving the verb if it's a verb that has a receiver, a transitive verb, right? So we, again, we don't need any pronouns because it's built into the verb. It's also going to tell us who possesses the entities that are in the sentence. So it, back in the fry bread case, it would be like who possesses the fry bread. Um, this is awesome to me. I just think it's so cool because we can have one word where all of these things are built into it, where as English, you have to have these different sets of words to make meaning. And in Lakota, Lakota is like, I'm going to make it super efficient. You just got to learn these patterns and it's all going to be in one word and we're going to go on and we're going to have a great time speaking Lakota. So what does this look like? So Bob walks in Lakota is Bob Mani. If you are new to Lakota language journey, this stage, this is called conjugation. And this is where we change the verb to reflect the intended meaning. So if Bob is walking, Bob Mani. Um, again, we're gonna change Bob in the English side, we're gonna change Bob to he. So we have to, when we don't wanna identify Bob, we have to change to he. But in Lakota, you can just drop the Bob. It's just Mani, it's just Mani. That means he walks. But when I want to walk, ma, ma, sorry, Mawani, there we go, get the stress right. Um, and then you walk Mayani. So here we have um, the conjugations. And again, conjugation, fancy grammar word, but it just means you change the verb. And here we're changing the verb to reflect who is doing the action. Some of us know this. Um, we've had some Lakota language classes where we're good. Um, but in my experience, because um, I teach at the Dakota Lakota Summer Institute um, pretty much every year um, for the past long time, um, this is kind of like the extent to where we get because we don't stick with verbs too much. Um, it's not until the next year where we can move on. And by the time the next year rolls around, people forget a lot. Um, so I'm excited to talk about what else our verbs can do. And our verbs can talk about who's receiving the action. So in Bob sees him, we have the verb wayanke, which means to see. Bob sees me, wamayanke. So instead of having a separate word me, we just build it into that verb because our verbs are buildable. They can get bigger and put all these little building blocks in them and they can mean, they can hold so much meaning, so much more meaning in my opinion than an English verb. Um, Bob sees you, Bob wan niyanke, Bob sees them, Bob wan wicha yanke, if they're animals. So here are our building blocks built into the verb. All right, we're gonna pause. Can anybody tell me in Lakota or Dakota, the answer to le daku het. That's one word. Yep. They use that out east, I think. I know Lando's on here, but I think, I think they might be driving. What is this? Le daku het. Can you see the picture? No, hold on. <laughs> I'm making it work. <laughs> oh, wiggly, wiggly and cog happy. Ah, oh, wiggly and cog happy. Yep, that's what we use. Uh, up at Standing Rock, wiggly and cog happy, or wiggly and cog happy. Um, wiggly meaning the grease, and then like you make it with grease, right? So, um. I guess that was more important than the bread part for Lakota. <laughs> the grease um, makes the difference. <laughs> huh? The grease makes the difference. The grease makes the difference, right? That's super important. Um, so wiggly unka happy. Um, well, you wash day. 
Oh, he need oh you wash day. So we're talking about Bob ate the fry bread. Bob weekly ungaha piki. And then our verb there is yute. He ate it. Pretty simple. Just look it up, ate or eat in the dictionary, and you get yute. Um, Bob ate his own fry bread, which is interesting because we have to have like his own or maybe his, like we have to change the sentence and by adding stuff. But in Lakota, we just changed that yute to glute. Bob Wiggly Unkahapi Glute. He ate his own fry bread. But when he's eating Sam's fry bread, we don't have this apostrophe S situation in Lakota. We use an entirely different verb to talk about that Bob is doing something to Sam's stuff, right? The Wiggly Unkahapi belongs to Sam. But Bob is doing something to Sam's stuff. Bob, Sam, Wiggly, Ngaha, Piki, or Giki, Yute. And these are the ways that we change the verb. This is how we conjugate the verb. So I say that the verb is important in Lakota, mostly because it's it's kind of the, the most complex word. Um, and it's something that you have to like pay attention to the most when you're like doing hearing exercises. But in my teaching, I say it's where all the magic happens. I really want students to pay attention to the verb because you can reduce one big sentence into one word in Lakota, which doesn't happen in English. So Bob Wiggly Ungaha Piki Glute, Bob ate his own fry bread. Bob glute, he ate his own. He ate what was his own. Or you could say glute, he ate what's his own. You don't even need the Bob there anymore. Um, so that's one of the reasons I, I tell my students to really pay attention to verbs. Um, we do a lot of verb work when I teach. Um, and I think that it's not until students kind of see it in action that they realize why we're doing verb work. So I'm going to give us a few examples of verb magic happening in real life. Um, so this is a letter from George Bushotter to Reverend Dorsey in 1887. And it's a sick note. And he's uh, telling, um, this is up at Standing Rock. He's he's telling Reverend Dorsey, "Hey, I can't come into work today. I'm sick. Wanal wash ag amayelo, but I'm I'm getting better. Um, I'm getting better. Um, I'm getting stronger. Sorry, that's what what I was trying to say. Um, and we can see this. Let me see if I can get to the link on um, through the Wooyake website, but for some reason it's not letting me click." Go back. Oh no. Screen sharing disabled. Oh, that's weird. Okay, yeah. hold on, let me see. No wait, I think it, it just came off and now it's, I got it, I got it. Okay. Um, I tried to use the link and then it shut down. So I'll know that for next time that the link's in the Canva presentation. So um, where I'm getting this letter from, because I know people are going to ask, is from a website that the Standing Rock um, Sioux Tribal IAPI program, so their language program, is putting together. There is like a like a dummy version online right now at woyake.org. Um, um, but eventually y'all will be able to see the same thing that I'm seeing. So this is a letter from George Bushotter to Reverend J.O. Dorsey in 1887. Um, this is the actual letter that someone had digitized. And then the whole letter is here. Um, and I think that sentence, uh, see, right here. Um, so this is real life um, action. So aye is like to become something and then wash ag is strong. So like right now I'm getting strong or stronger, we would say in English. Um, 
So that's one example. I mean, you find examples all over, but this was just kind of a opportunity for me to um, show off Woyake a little bit. So in the same website, I'll bring us to this cool story. <laughs> And we'll go to collections. And these were some of the essential understanding interviews. And in the story of Ab Audrey told by um, Unchi Dolores Taken Alive. And you can see the video here. I'll just play a few seconds. Ahani in so it's a really beautiful story and what i found cool was this use of chi chi means to want to do something but when we break down wa unspe in the sentence na you get something pretty cool and i'll have to bring up my presentation to sh break it down Um, we have that Wicha again, which is the building block that we had for um, them. Bob sees them. Um, and we have the verb wa onspe kia. Um, which has its, its root onspe. Um, so this word wa onspe wichakia can be broken down into a bunch of other sort of building blocks. The ones that we're talking about is like the receiver or the possessor. Um, but um, I really like how we think about teaching in Lakota because it's to cause someone to learn something. I feel like it's a little bit more active than in English, like to be a teacher, but um, in in Lakota, it's it's really to cause someone to learn something. And in this case, this woman, Audrey, um, wanted um, to cause Lakota, so the Lakota people um, uh, to learn. Um, and that's what the story is about, is, is her becoming a teacher and, and really, um, uh, I guess um, praying for the people and and really being a good relative. Um, so um, because of the examples that we have, I, I wanted to bring us to this example that is from um, the first um, story in uh, Dakota text that Ella Deloria had um, uh, transcribed. Um, and that is, um, this really fun word that I've highlighted, we cha waglu dink da cha. Um, and so I think we'll read it and then maybe we can figure out, um, who said it. So, wan lechia oyate wan we chote, we choti cha ekta we cha ble lo. And now we cha waglu dink da cha. So, the verb here, the root verb here is yute, to eat. Glute becomes to eat one's own. Waglute is I will eat my own. And then wicha waglute is I will eat those that are my own. So like those living things that are my own. So 
the translation for the sentence before is um, the 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 people that are camping there. I'm going to walk over to them, and then so hena we chawa glutink dacha. I'm going to eat them that are my own. Anybody know who says this in the first Dakota story? Dakota text story, sorry. Character that eats people. Yeah, so this is Ia and he's saying on this page, there's a camp over there. This is when Iktomi's like, hey, what you doing, man? Like, I'm gonna trick you. Or he doesn't know he's gonna trick him yet, but he's like, I'm gonna like not, I'm gonna pretend that I'm buddy buddy with you so that you don't eat me. And then Ia says, you know, I'm gonna go over there and I'm going to wichawa glutink dacha. So um Them, I will eat, they are mine. Like, it, like it's impossible to kind of write that out in like a good uh, like English sentence. If I remember correctly, um, Ella Deloria writes something like, I will eat them, this is in her translation, it's like, I will eat them for they are mine. Um, I'm going to eat them for they are mine, which is just like a really terrible thing. I mean, like this verb, we chawa glutink dacha, he's talking about people. And it's not like, I don't know, I think it just comes across more powerful in Lakota for a lot of reasons. But, but he, Ia already believes that these people belong to him that's how bad of a guy he was like he already believes like it's not like I'm gonna make them mine I'm gonna take them he's like they're mine I'm just gonna go and eat them <laughs> so um that's why I like this verb there's a there's a lot of um I mean th this is how our language is built this isn't just like let me pick some isolated context I did that specifically so we could use this example because it went with the other examples that we have. But um, if you're looking for a way to practice Lakota or to get some grammar on your own, I highly, highly encourage looking at verbs, playing with verbs, um, looking at the different verb forms and the different conjugations. I don't want you to be too afraid of what conjugation means. Um, because we know um, how it works in English, right? We, we know that the word order is what matters in English, but in Lakota, it's these little tiny building blocks are what matters. And so just like you implicitly learned or maybe eventually explicitly learned about word order in English, we can say it's 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 not the same thing, but it's the same concept. Like the meanings exist in both languages, but how they're expressed are different. Um, and I think a lot of people just like get really afraid when we get into these tiny little we cha wa gla gi gi chi. Um, but if you think about them and what they're meaning in English, it becomes a lot easier. Now, once you take those verbs and you're putting them in a context, like a whole paragraph, then the semantic meaning, then the like bigger, deeper meanings, like when we talk about Lakota has bigger, deeper meanings that don't often get expressed, you know, as we learn it, um, that's, that holds true. That's the same, like, like what Ia is saying here, we chawa glutink dacha, um, is profound considering the context of the story and the Lakota worldview that this monster assumes that all the people belong to him and so he can just go snack on them. Like, um, but like we can understand that the wa here that's green is referring to the actor. And we can look at the orange and know that that is meaning that what's being eaten belongs to him. And then the wicha 
he's talking about what he's going to eat, multiple things or multiple people in this case. Um, so it seems like, I think a lot of people get really scared, like I said, but if you think about it, like we know this in English, we know what an actor is in English or our um, subject. Some people know the word subject. Subjects here in that wa. We know what possession is in English. Possessions represented here in the gl. We know what an object is. Some of us might not know that term, but we know what, what an object of the sentence is. He sees Sam, right? And that's represented here with the wicha. Now, I'm not gonna go into the patterns of all of the different verbs and all of the different things. My goal here was just to show you how we can pack so much information into our Lakota verbs. And I think that's really cool. But I also want to say that you all have the ability to go and learn these things because you have this metalinguistic knowledge. It might seem, and. And some people who teach grammar are, are not good. Sometimes I, I'm not, so, so I've taught lessons, grammar lessons, where I've had to say, okay, students, we're going to try this again. Forget everything that you did. Like a lot of teachers, when they're trying to explain this, like it's not like there's a whole industry of good grammar like there is for French and German and people have like figured out the tips and tricks and things. We're all kind of figuring it out on ourselves. But I think the biggest hurdle is when people hear grammar, they like turn off. Um, but what I'm saying is you can really harness your knowledge of language in general um, to keep going on. Three things to keep in mind when you're working with Lakota verbs, and I'll, I'll say this really quickly, is that um, you got to know the root word. So what is the word that you're that you're trying to say or is being said? What's the root of that word? And then every root word is going to have its own conjugation pattern. So its own building blocks that uh, attach to it. Sometimes it's wa, sometimes it's ma in the I version. Sometimes it's chi, I to you. Sometimes it's wicha. It's going to have its own pattern. Um, and there are tons of charts and there are different ways that you can learn that. Um, we can talk about that. Um, but know that there's only three steps really to, to working with the Lakota verb, the root word, the pattern, and then you gotta know where those building blocks go in the word. Sometimes it's the middle, sometimes it's at the beginning. Um, technically, this is called the affix point, which is terrible. I call it the conjugation station and I don't know why people don't call it the conjugation station because that's way easier to remember. So learning those three things and we can talk about where you can learn those three things but once you get that then you can start swapping things around and doing drills and then most importantly or i think most importantly engaging with language that you've already heard like we heard some of unchi dolores's um story we've read the story from bush otter we've looked at the text from dakota text and you don't have to know anything else in the sentence if you can look and find what the verb is and then break it into little pieces, you can know a lot about what that sentence or even what that paragraph is saying. I think the wichawa gluntik dacha, that verb from Ia pretty much sums up his whole vibe, right? That's his, that's like what he's doing. Um, and so I, I just want um, to encourage you all to um, go, learn some, go learn some verbs, go seek out some verbs, go play with verbs. Um, and ask questions and, and keep practicing. So, um, Pilama Yayapi, there's some more building blocks in that sentence too. Um, but yeah, um, I have a website that has my contact information. So if anybody wants to contact me through that website, you can, but I wanted to save a lot of time for questions. I don't know how we're doing questions. Clementine, what's the? Yeah, I think if if there are folks in the Zoom room or if you have a question and you're joining us on Facebook Live, um, you can unmute yourself in Zoom or if you're uncomfortable being like on in public, you can drop it in the chat. Or if you're joining us on Facebook Live, you can drop a comment in the live and we will relay that to Tasha. So if any folks have questions, Comments. 
I just have a quick question. Yeah. In the um the word um wicha wagaluta kdacha, what is what is that? Ah uh, yeah. So Dakota speakers, that would be um we have an e ablaut. So it's um uh wahadu 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 de that's what you that's your oblaut pattern is e kte. so well, the future is some like if there's like a specific like what does kta with cha mean oh cha there cha there means and i'm um like i'm that's why i'm doing it so like that's why i'm like or because you can kind of use because oh okay um like okay. I'm gonna go there because I'm gonna eat them. Got it. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Not me. Out. Sorry, I got I I I know that the Dakota ablots are different and and I couldn't remember that. No, it's fine. I was just wondering. Yeah. I'm curious what um what sort of ways people learn about verbs or like what the, do they do? I, I, I don't know what different communities are doing with verbs. I think that people get scared or nerds like me go off and we're like, we love verbs. So I don't know what the in-between is like. I feel like it's a lot of like, um, right, like, trying to apply it to everyday life beyond the introduction right how do we think about what we're doing in our everyday life but even mm -hmm. that is a challenge right so much of what we learned historically was from a oral methodology and now because of the impact of the written word like we do get I think stuck in those like am I putting this together correctly do I understand the building blocks? I know those are my own challenges. It's like, I understand there are things that are supposed to go in certain places, but then I get overwhelmed and I'm just, that I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah, that's why I encourage you, if if you can access um, written Lakota or if you have a like a fluent speaking elder around um, where you can look look at the word or have them repeat it and then you can kind of like break it down um I think if you can do that orally for me it sticks the best like if you can have them speak it and then you write it down and then you identify it like it something for me just like locks in place um but if you don't know what the building blocks are then it just sounds like a huge word and it sounds really complicated um but once you know that there are these little building blocks that put together words like, oh my gosh, it's it's a lot easier. Um, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't, there hasn't been any questions. Someone answered the Ia when you were asking. Oh, uh, nice. I didn't see it. Yeah. Um, I, but it was on the, it was on Facebook. So I appreciate oh, okay. um, our participation on Facebook live, but there, ha there hasn't been any questions. So I just want to open up in the zoom room. If you all have any questions for Tasha before we close out the session. I just want to chime in on the whole verbs too, because hello, um, 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 hello, I'm kind of late. Sorry, but I was Ubering it back to my house. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, on, on the verbs, like for me, I'm like learning more Lakota with verb, using verbs more than, you know, because growing up, you know, we just, I mean, our, our ancestors did their best to teach Lakota, you know, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's different. It's, it's, it's a healing journey. So me, the verbs have been coming like more like bread and butter for me. And um, instead of wor worrying about the writing part of it and all that, just actually um, structuring it, learning what what the verb is. So, for instance, like this summer, I did teach a co-taught with Mawash um, uh, Mashtewi up in Bismarck, and she did a whole exercise on uh, who hit me. 
So Dua Amane Pehe. So who hit me? So you get your group. So I, I did it with my class. And so I, with my, uh, about eight students and we put somebody in the, in the middle and we just go around and we just tap them on the shoulder and we say, Dua Amane Pehe. And then they say, then they got to choose three people that maybe perhaps hit them and they got to decide who the, who the correct person was that hit them. And so I have like kids that are from Pueblo, um, they're Navajo, Diné. Um, there's a lot of, um, um, a lot of our Mexican relatives that are in my class. And so they, they honestly, they really got the verbs right off the back without having to write. And so learning that instruction of just direct verbs of like action verbs actually as you're doing it. So it really does help out a lot. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to chime in on that part. Yeah, um, that's a really great game to, to talk about the, like the receiver of the action, um, like who's receiving the, the, the tap or the hit or the gaze. Um, but you, what you said also reminded me about verbs being the bread and butter is that there are so many nouns that we know that are actually verbs, like wakalyapi. We know what wakalyapi is, right? But it actually means they make it hot. It like it, it, it's the conceptualization of the entity that we call coffee in English is how you make it. Um, wiggly unkahapi, same thing. You make it with oil. Um, there's another one, wowapi for book, um, has owa is to write. Um, so a lot of these nouns that we have, we actually put on another building block which is to make it more abstract. And then we put on another building block, usually a B to, to, to talk about it's like the thing that everybody does or some people understand it as to make it a noun. Um, sorry, getting super linguistic here, but um, the root is the verb. And so like, if you know how the verb works and you know what that verb means, then you also then know a whole bunch of nouns too. Um, so I love verbs. Go love verbs. Go love a verb today. <laughs> I also, that makes me think of the, and here I'm going to get really nerdy here, but right, like if we are action oriented, then we're thinking about the animacy of non-human relatives, right? Like it's not an object, but our relationship to that object and how we're engaging it. So it's right? Like a broader conceptual, like you said, it's a broader concept of how we're interacting with the world, which is very comforting <laughs> mm -hmm. at a time when I think we need to figure out how to be better relatives, right? And it's already there in our language. And so I just, in um, closing, I just want to say thank you, Tasha. And thank you, uh, Orlando, for coming and participating to um, I, I really appreciate all of our, our language teachers, because I know you all are taking up a heavy lift for us. Um, and so I really appreciate that and all that you do. And so thank you for, for coming and sharing tonight. Thanks for having me and thank you all.